Welcome back to the AI for Good Global Summit here in Geneva on day three. And I'm joined now by uh, Tor Chivlowski, I hope I got that right, founder, CEO, Iridescent, based in California. This is your first time you've been to this summit. Uh, we'll ask why it's taken you so long to get here. But um, first of all, tell us a little bit about Iridescent. Uh, so it's a global engineering and technology education nonprofit, and we really want to work with communities that don't typically uh, interact with technology, especially girls and women, and to give them a sense that they have a role to play in this conversation, um, primarily as users and creators, not just consumers. And um, especially with the speed at which AI is taking over all aspects of our life, it's even more important for these groups to be on the other side creating rather than being just the receptors. So that is our role. So in fact, you're trying to get women, and especially younger women, to participate in making software, using the data mm -hmm. themselves, as opposed mm -hmm. to being um, the end user. Yep, yeah, totally. So the way we do it is um, a family uh, is challenged to find a problem that they care about, and they actually go through a crash course in machine learning, and they actually create an AI-based prototype, and then pitch it. And we just finished our big AI World Championship, where we had finalists from Bolivia, Pakistan, Palestine, Uzbekistan come and present their ideas and it is uh, it was amazing to see mothers get up on stage and talk about AI. That's not something you see every day. But that's you're talking about individuals, isn't it? Usually startups or big business that or governments that gets that, that is in charge of the AI. Totally, and that's why, I mean, that's our mission, is to democratize this type of knowledge, and it's not enough to say it, there's an open online AI platform and course for anybody to use. You need somebody to actually work at the grassroots level to go to individuals and say, I think you can do this, and that's our role. Uh, you, you gave a talk? Uh, I was leading the education track. And how did that go? It was awesome, a lot of work, um, but yeah, we had 300 people, and. Uh, it was really exciting to see that people want to bring this type of AI empowerment into their communities in multiple ways. So we had um, media be part of it to try to think about how can you empower journalists, especially in local areas, to better cover AI stories because many times journalists do not have the time nor the technical training to question and go deeper in some of these stories. And so what it ends up happening is the media covers the same type of stories. And then when people read it, they don't engage with it because they don't see themselves or it's not relating and it's building up to the AI hype. And so we see our role as also being um, empowering journalists to kind of change the narrative a little bit. Um, and another track, subgroup, whatever, was um, working with industry mentors to go into their communities to share some of the AI current technologies because it's changing so fast. You can't just have teachers do this. Isn't the problem though, although that, that you, when you start talking about uh, computer machines uh, or um, mathematic machines, people's eyes glaze over if they don't already yes. understand it? Yes, completely. And that's why you start by saying, what has something frustrated you lately? And then what, or is, what is a problem that you're grappling with? Or what is meaningful to you? And then when you uh, hook somebody that way, then you can say, oh, by the way, did you know that there's this piece of technology that could be powerful to solve it? This is your first time you've been here. How's it gone for you? Um, it's been amazing, especially to see the global um, diversity of ideas. I think one of the panels that resonated with me was, um, I think, three senators from Bahamas, Zimbabwe. Um, I forget the third one. <laughs> but And the, what they said was that it's rare, it's only the UN platform that they have an equal footing with the big guys to share their opinions. And, and I thought that was, but that was very powerful. Um, otherwise, only the same big dogs sort of get to um, cover the conversation. And I think th it really is a, a powerful feeling to feel that just the world is so large and each person's voice is different, um, but it's part of the overall conversation. Well, that was Tara Jivlowski of Iridescent in California. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks.